Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm in the mood for some punishment this morning, so I'm going to see if I can um, resurrect this uh, 19, late 1930s Amiga ladies' watch. The um, I don't necessarily appreciate these uh, tiny pre-war movements, but I just absolutely love this Art Deco design on the case and um, yeah I'd like to get this to be a working watch again it's uh, really cute and um, I bet somebody would love to wear it it's probably a little bit too small for me this is the inner case I have taken it apart a long time ago and I forgot to put this back in put it in the box and I was looking around my stuff and I thought you know what let's do this watch um, so goal number one is to get it ticking I know there's some hairspring trouble waiting for me in there. I will polish the crystal. I will um, remove this band, get it on a nice little leather strap. Um, I am also going to um, polish the case because it has been polished before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a vertical brush here, a vertical brush here and keep this polished here and a vertical brush on the sides and the back. So, well, we're going to have polished here and vertical here, I think. So now I've said it, I better keep to my word and <laughs> I hopefully won't muck it up. But I, I would like to make this a nice little watch that pops. Um, it's, it's really cool and it deserves to um, be bought, brought a bit back to its former glory. Um, Some people probably comment, say that's not the original way the finishing of the case should be. At the moment, I... if somebody sends me an ad of how it was or whatever that's fine but it looks like somebody's refinished this once before and it does have vertical brushing here and it has uh, some form of vertical brushing along here and um, somebody has brushed something on the sides so it's a bit hard to catch it in the camera here but looking under the microscope so I'll try to recreate what I think it might have looked like when new uh, and if not it's going to look great anyway so um, yeah, wish me luck. The later bracelet, definitely not what this watch would have been delivered on new. I will re remove that, and for that I need to just basically pry it open the sides because it's kind of a press fit. There we go, we've pried that open, and now we can get the bracelet off the... Uh, fixed, um, well, it's not a spring bar, it's uh, the lug, I would say. Did that do the same on the other side? And uh, we can open the watch. This is an official uh, media case. So it would be in this inner case here. There we go. See that dial? Just love the design on that. Super Art Deco. Beautiful. And um, there's the movement. Lovely little movement. I'm not sure if this is a uh, who's manufactured it, if Omega did it in-house, or if it's a Mark Favre collaboration, or whatever it is, let's have a quick look. Well, we have good, the balance stuff is good on it. Let's have a look at the hairspring. So that's the main issue with the hairspring, is that it is uh, deformed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the balance out and see if I can reshape the hairspring. If, you, if I can't do that, I might as well just stop now and look for a donor. That's my kink there. Already kind of gotten it where I want it, so just a tiny bit more adjustment, and hopefully this hairspring will be just fine. We have now reshaped the hairspring to what I think will work. You can see the coils are evenly spaced from each other, and hopefully won't touch when the balance is in operation. Beautiful balance wheel with uh, biometallic. You can see the inner inner part of the balance wheel is made out of uh, steel and the outer is um, brass that's been I guess vulcanized together 
and then you have the brass uh, timing screws going all around um, very nice piece of engineering the um, the, um, the balance uh, balance stuff itself looks to be in very good condition all the pivots are good so um, hopefully this will work so I'll continue dismantling the movement and um, yeah, we'll take from there. The movement itself is a T12.6 T1. So it's, uh, yeah, late 1930s movement. We we'll, can actually look up the serial, the date by the serial number as well, which we have here. So what I can do is go on to mitco.co.uk. I'll go into watch store, go on to Omega. It's nothing for sale right now, but we can go on the serial number lookup and get that into focus. The serial number on this one is 85.62.742. So we can go down 85 from 8,500,000 to 8750 is 1937. So we know this little lady's uh, movement is from 1937. Pretty cool. Another thing which is nice to check before I take everything apart is that the gear train is moving nice and freely, which it is. So I take the pallet cock out and able to let that move freely like that. Next, I'm going to take the rest of the movement apart. Uh, we're going to polish a case, clean the movement, and we'll put the watch back in real time. All back together. Balance has been um, fitted back, back into the balance cock. I did a little bit more of the adjusting on that hair spring to get it right, and it seems to be moving quite nicely. So there's no coils touching, and the balance is moving freely. I'm very happy with that. Now I'm going to take it off the base movement and start putting it, to put the movement back together. Now, the bi biggest challenge on a tiny, well, this isn't the smallest movement I've done. It's actually quite big compared to some of them. And it is smaller than your average movement. So the biggest challenge is, of course, to make sure you don't break any pivots while putting everything back together. I'm going to start by putting the gear train in. There's no, there's no um, sub second on this, so uh, let's, don't have to worry about that. All right, there's a certain certain sequence these uh, this gear train likes to go in. Let's start with the escape wheel. We have the fourth wheel. Third wheel. No, actually, I think third, uh, we have the center wheel. There we go. And then we have the third wheel. I'm going to get the bridge and I'm going to fit the bridge under the microscope because this stuff is pretty fiddly and I don't want to break any pivots. There I have the 
basic gear train back in. I still got the um, barrel bridge to go on, but in this case, I'd like to do the gear train first. There I have the uh, basic gear train in under the bridge. I'm just going to um, tighten the screws. Make sure I use a suitable screwdriver for that. I almost performed a fatal error by tightening the screws when one of the pivots had jumped out of the position. Luckily, I noticed that before tightening, and uh, yeah, they're all good. Phew, over to the barrel bridge. The barrel bridge has much bigger pivots, um, so not, not so worried as I am when fitting the gear train bridge. A little dollop, dollop, dollop of oil on the center wheel and the barrel arbor. Okay. Okay, time to secure the barrel bridge screws. There we go. That's in. Next, I'm going to fit the crown wheel here, which is an intermediate winding wheel that goes to the ratchet wheel. Put a couple of nice drops of red grease there, help that spin around. We've got the free slotted screw which indicates that it is a left-hand turn. There we go, that's in place. Sorry for coming out of focus. Um, we also have our ratchet wheel, comes in here. It has a standard right-hand turn screw. Gear train moving, and now it's time to oil the gear train and fit the winding and setting mechanism. When oiling, you kind of want to fill the cup halfway up. More than that is too much, and less than that is a bit too little. Now I'm going to fit the winding and setting mechanism. I'm actually going to start by fitting the cannon pinion. Tiny drop of oil on that, that to turn around nicely. Give it a nice, even, firm press in the center, like that, until you hear a click. If it's very tight, you can support it in the back in the staking set. If it's like this, I uh, tend to use my tweezers straight. That works nicely. Bit of grease on the winding pinion teeth. Slope ones on the side that engage with the sliding pinion. We'll drop the sliding pinion in and we will put a bit of grease on the surface that engages with the there yeah, with the yoke. The yoke lever post can also get a tiny droplet of grease. The rule of thumb is everything that slides. And it gets a little bit of grease to help it move along. And we have the winding stem, gets grease. I have to compl compliment Amiga that uh, when they made this movement, they made everything relatively solid. Some ladies' movements are just ridiculously fiddly unnecessarily. You don't need to make the screws smaller than they have to be 
just to show how talented you are because all you're asking for is stripped threads in the future. Well, this is all fairly robust and nicely made, at least in my book. So, um, so far I've actually enjoyed working on this movement. I was thinking I was going to dread it, but I don't want to speak too soon. Anyway, I don't need to fit the yoke quite yet. Uh, I'm going to fit the setting lever there and for that I have to secure it from the other side and take it out of the holder. I fit the screw on to the top, I'm not doing that under the camera now because it's a bit of a difficult angle. So I'm holding a movement here, I have now secured the screw from the other side around, which is this screw here that secures the setting lever. I'm actually going to put the movement down here now to finish off the setting and winding mechanism. A little droplet of oil on the post for the intermediate winding wheels. There's the yokes in place. We have the intermediate winding wheel. Have the minute wheel make sure all the teeth engage as they should there we go we have the setting lever which also acts as a bridge for the intermediate setting wheels Fit that, of course, it's a good idea to fit the yoke spring. Like so. Make sure the yoke's engaging with the sliding pinion. Now we can fit the setting lever spring. There, a little bit of movie magic, setting lever spring in place, give that a little dollop of grease on the lever that holds it in place. Good stuff. Now we can also see that the movement is moving freely. Next, I'm going to fit the pallet and the pallet bridge or pallet cock oil the pallet and then we'll see how it performs, if it will perform at all. Lovely finishing on the pallet fork itself, as you can see, highly polished. A lot of work, work went into this. I do have a video of me servicing a little ladies a turner as well. It was Far more fiddly than this, but also very high finish on everything. All right, there we go. See if we can get that pallet cock in there. Put this to the side. I'll do this under the microscope now because it's just very fiddly. There you can see the oil on the pallet fork. So now I'm going to move the pallet fork forward or back and forth, moving the gear train forward and that will disperse the oil nicely um, on all the teeth. So I'll do that a couple of times. Now for the part I've kind of been uh, looking forward to or and dreading at the same time, and that is to see if this thing will now perform.
Well, that's a good start. It is ticking. Okay, the amplitude doesn't look too bad. But I won't know until I have it on the time graph. And I predict a bit of fuffing. I've spent a bit of time uh, working on the hairspring. It was quite off, but now we've got it to, to where I'm quite happy with it. So I'm going around zero seconds a day, dialed down, 299 amplitude, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 beat error. That's, uh, I'm happy with that. If I turn it around, dial up, it will gain a tiny bit of time. Let's have a look. Let's, let's uh, have that settle. So that's dialed up. We have a beta of uh, even less, 0 0.2. Uh, let that settle. Well, it's getting about 15 seconds dial up a day. So not ideal positional variation on that. Uh, the hairspring was quite deformed, but considering what I've been working with, I'm very happy with this. If we do, let's see, I think that's even slowing down plus 12 seconds here. So it's about 10 seconds difference, dial up, dial down, when it's fully settled, is what I've noticed. But if I do, if I do crown down, of course we get a bit more of a variational, positional variation here. saying plus 40 but just let that settle for being an old blued hairspring from that's been reshaped uh, from this time period I'm pretty happy with that it's getting about 20 seconds uh, crown down so overall very happy with the performance of the movement and um, I'll put it together tomorrow. It's uh, 5.30, this clock is off, and it's time for me to go home and have some dinner. Look at that, it's actually settling very nice, uh, crown down, plus 10 seconds a day, almost the same as uh, dial up. Good stuff. Good news, the watch is ticking very lively and happily the day after, and now we're going to fit the dial and hands again. First thing we do when fitting the dial and hands is of course fit the hour wheel, otherwise it would uh, be loose in there. Also have this little dial washer, prevents the hour wheel from riding up. You have a little bump on with this cute little Art Deco dial. Make sure the dial screws are unscrewed. Basically, you have little posts on the dial, and the screw screws into the side of it. Really cute little set of hands. There we go. The time now is 9.07. I'll 
leave that there and um, see if I can polish the case up a bit. So, been uh, working on the case, done the brush finishes with the brush. Well, first I remove all the scratches, um, otherwise you'll see the scratches through the brush finish anyway. Uh, now I'm going to polish the square that goes around the crystal. That should be polished, not brushed. And then I'm going to mask the sides and see if I can get these little squares on the side polished, uh, gloss polished as well. Now it's time to put the movement into the newly polished case. Um, I'm fairly happy with the result. I think it looks pretty cool. I've also polished the crystal here. And uh, as you can see, there's still a dent on the side here, um, but very difficult to get out and I don't, I don't want to go overboard on this case, so it's a bit of a kind of compromise. That you're not going to compromise, so you can see how thin the case is. I really don't want to go full whack polishing that down to nothing left. So this is still, I've almost removed no material whatsoever because I've mainly been burnishing. But uh, yeah, I like the um, kind of finish I've put on here. You can see the... Uh, high gloss squares on the edges. We've got the brushing this way, brushing this way, so it uh, does play very nice in the light. Same goes for the case back, we've got the brushed in the middle. You can see some defects on that, but it's, it's you can't really see it when you look at it. And once this has been lying on the table a couple of times, you'll have that anyway. And the high polished edges going around, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that. And, uh, you can also see I've also done a horizontal brush finish on the flat here. So it might not uh, seem so good in the video, but in person it looks great. Anyway, let's put this uh, the movement in its little protective case. You can regulate from the back there. Also remove the... Um, stem from within the hole. But you simply put this in here. And there you have it. I think that turned out very nice. That is a really nice, really nice little watch. The case polishing, I'm not a pro at this. I'm just in the process of learning. So that's why I uh, am doing it, especially on this watch, which is mine. It will be available on the website mitka.co.uk. It will come up for sale. Um, so if you're interested in this beautiful 1937 Amiga ladies watch, real statement of Art Deco, I would say, uh, send me an email or just wait till the pictures come up and you can see it there. One detail I'm quite chuffed with is one you don't really notice, but that is getting that high polished square on the inside of the case here next to the crystal. This looks so much better than if it's brushed all the way up. That's how it should be. Anyway.
anyway, until the next time, have a good one.